Amy Murphy from Rehumanize International joins us today. She's a pro-life feminist. And Amy, we are so happy that you're here with us. Thanks for being on the show. Happy to be with you. Tell me, how can someone be a pro-life person and a feminist? It's, those are not two words that we normally hear together. You know, I think when you come back to the roots of what feminism is, and you understand that feminism is a movement for the equality of human beings based on sex, then you have to understand that this equality is inherent in us. It's something that transcends sex. It transcends gender identity. It transcends race. It transcends religion. Um, so what is this inherent quality that gives us this equality, right? Mm -hmm. So if we evaluate that question, it comes back to our humanity. And if that's true, which I obviously believe, then the real question is actually whether you can be pro-choice and a feminist, because abortion as an act of violence is a form of lethal discrimination against the smallest members of our human family. Tell us a little bit about the work your group does, Sidewalk Sidekicks and the Encounter Universe. So Sidewalk Sidekicks was a program that we developed specifically uh, you know, to reach non-sectarian or non-religious audiences to be able to empower them and equip them to be able to reach um, you know, abortion-minded people entering an abortion clinic uh, with compassion, with resources, uh, you know, with a, a heartfelt and nonviolent response to abortion. Um, so we worked with Sidewalk Advocates for Life and their crew to put together this little, um, you know, pamphlet and educational resources that are really geared towards, you know, I think my millennial generation, um, you know, that is the most non-religious um, generation and, you know, just something that is aesthetically pleasing and speaks to this idea of empowerment first. Um, Encounter Universe is a, another project that we developed that is based on the idea of Sonder. Sonder is a word that was created by John Koenig with the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows that means the understanding that every human being which, with whom you interact has a life as vivid and complex as your own. So practically speaking, what this means is empathy on the ground, in our actions, in our conversations with people, um, you know, in everything that we do, understanding the selfhood, you know, the, the je ne sais quoi about human beings and like what, what we are really comes to, to view, I guess, to full view through story, through narrative, through understanding the depth of our lives. Um, so when we you know, uphold human stories, we also uphold human dignity. And, you know, we build human rights by building empathy. So that's a little bit about what Encounter Universe is. That's excellent. What are some misconceptions about the pro-life movement that you've encountered? You know, there's a stereotype that everyone in the pro-life movement must be a conservative, Christian, old, uh, you know, male, I think also that, you know, there's that in there. Um, and for so many of us, for so many of my peers, you know, it's a young woman led movement that is welcoming and inclusive to secular people, uh, you know, to people from all these different religious backgrounds, from, you know, lower class to upper class, everyone in between. Um, you know, it's something that is inclusive because we understand that our philosophy is based on this inherent human dignity, right? And if we come back to that, then not only do we need to be inclusive in the, you know, the those for whom we work to protect their rights, but also in our movement, you know, we're inclusive with who we involve in our work as well. Um, so there's, you know, this misconception about who we are. And I think the younger generation is doing more to demonstrate 
the inclusivity of the movement. Excellent. Do you think it's possible for a pro-life feminist and a pro-choice feminist to find common ground? And if so, how can we do that? (laughs) Definitely. Um, You know, I have a lot of friends from college who uh, would identify as pro-choice feminists. Um, And, you know, keeping this line of communication open, this conversational dialogue, you know, this long-term friendship is something that has helped us to see where we can find our common ground, where we can work together on these issues. Um, you know, I think there's this polarization of politics that happens in our nation where we can be tempted to dehumanize people on the other side of the political spectrum. And so, you know, the way to overcome that dehumanization in our political discourse is just to build friendships with people who might be on the other side, right? Because when it comes down to it, pro-life and pro-choice feminists both believe in the empowerment of women, both believe that we need to be doing more to, uh, you know, offer uh, help, resources, and empowerment for those who feel like they have no other choice but abortion. So there's so much that we have in common. So being able to find that common ground, I think, is going to propel both sides uh, of our movement to a more holistic, human-centered ethics and practice. Excellent. Amy, tell us um, where we can find more about what you do in, in your group. So you can find us online at rehumanizeintl.org, also on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at rehumanizeintl. And uh, if you're interested in getting involved with us on a local level, we're also starting affiliate communities around the nation. So you can get in touch with us through our website to learn more about that. Excellent. Thank you so much for being with us. We are so grateful. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day.